Okay, what we're going to do is cut a keyhole. And it's called a keyhole because it looks like a key. See it? An old-fashioned key. So it's going to go in, over, and it can't come out here because it makes a no new hole on this side, which we don't want. So we're going to go in, across, back out, and up. That's what we're going to do. The bit looks like this. I get, get them from Infinity. Um, why? Because they last longer. They're a better bit. They cost a little bit more money. I was getting them in, at uh, one of the local stores, but they don't do a near as good a job as this one does. It's built a lot stronger. It does a good job. The dimensions on it, the total depth of cut from this point to here, which is the key itself, is 0.388. The cutting surface at the bottom is 0.188. So that basically gives us 0.2 inches of depth of plunge that we could have maximum. So what I had to do then was to figure out how do I do this with the CNC. I've got it set up on a table, uh, router table at home in Michigan, but down here I don't have a router table to do it on. so. I'm going to set it up on my CNC, so I have to figure out how to do that. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to program it, and that video will be included as part of this video. So that's what I'm working on. We're taking a look at the Vetric screen now. I'm going to create a new project, and it's going to be, when I finish messing around here, it'll be 3 by 2 inches. And I'm going to locate it in the lower right corner. That way, that's where it's going to start. So I can actually draw a line in the lower right corner, and it's going to be cutting my keyhole. So that lower right corner is where I want the entrance to my bit to go. So that's why I chose the lower right corner. We're going to make it three inches long, the box anyway. That gives me a scale to figure out how to long to make my line. I make it, made it about two and three quarters. Uh, if I had it to do it over, which I always do have time to do it over. I would have made it about two and a half, so I'd have made it a quarter inch shorter. But it doesn't matter. That quarter inch doesn't hurt anything. I've just opened the tool palette, so now we're looking at both the drawing tablet on the left and tool palette on the right. So I've got to create a line, a polyline tool. Click where you think you want to start, and you see I'm not far from where that origin is, or our beginning point. And I drew the line about 2.72 so that's, uh, I'm backing it off now to 2.69. And I want to go up. I hit the space bar and we're going to close out of the line tool. I want these two lines to be 0 0.002 apart. So I'm going to use the offset tool. It's there on the left, all the way with a red square around it. And then I have to select this box change my offset dimension which is down in the box I'm gonna make that point zero zero two and then click on the offset button and I will see it looks like one big fat line but it's actually two lines that are very far apart are not very far apart so I'm going to go up to my zoom window tool and I'll make a little window around the end of the box and you'll see that there are two separate little lines there. See them? Now I'm going to join those two lines with a line. And the reason I didn't draw it all at once is because I didn't, I wanted a little more precise control. This gives me these two lines that are exactly that far apart. Now, excuse me what I'm going to do is join those vectors so I've selected all three lines and I'm going to use 0 0.001 as the tolerance and say join the reason I selected that is because I want to make those lines continuous as one line not three separate lines now if I zoom out when I select my line close this you will see that it selects all three lines as one piece. I'll zoom in again so you can see it once it's selected. 
is I also want you to note, once we select it, we're going to use the node edit tool. So when I click on that, it shows the green box is my start point and the black box is my end point. So it actually starts at that one line at the bottom, follows the same line all the way to the end, and then pulls out at the end. And that's what we want it. So it's not really that hard of a project to do. And 0 0.002 inches is so small that we won't notice it. So we're just going to use 2D profile two path, tool path, and we're going to cut, we're going to start at zero. We're going to cut at a depth of 0.3, wished I typed faster but I, than I talk, but I don't, 3.4. Remember I said the tool was 0.388 in total length, so we're going to almost max the depth of the tool, but not quite. Now we have to edit. See it says right there it takes three passes to do that. We cannot do it in three passes. We have to do it in one path. So we have to go into our editing parameters and change the path, path depth. And you can see we're going to change that from 0.15 to 0.34. So that way it cuts in one pass. We're also going to change this, which really doesn't matter, but I changed it anyway. Um, that's your step over. And uh, I am going to change the speed rate because that does matter. Slow it down because we're taking a huge bite all at once, 0.34. And we're changing it to 50, and I actually slow it down in the field where we cut to 25% of that. So that should have been about 20, 15 to 20. But I have an older machine, so I try to design it so it'll work on my new machine and my old machine. So that's why it's movable. And then we're going to name this file to keyhole path or cut and then hit calculate. Oh, it says there's an error. Current parameters, check out the tool for clearance. And see what I did wrong is I told it it had to go outside. And when you do that, it eats up itself. So it says, no, you made an error. So I'm going to say OK. I'm on. Hey, you can do it. <laughs> now I'll go over and say, go on exactly on the line. and It'll do what I want. And then hit calculate. And then it does it. Okay. Now we'll look at a preview of it. And you'll see because the tool, keep in mind, is a quarter inch. So it's actually going to clear out a larger area. So it'll clear off where my board is. But keep in mind, I wanted it that close to my origin, so I knew where my keyhole would start. So I'll just slow it down so you can see the cut. And then I can hit Preview. And you'll see the tool go across and come straight back, and then it goes up, out of the way. So that accomplishes what I want, and it works great. Now we're out in the lab and you're seeing the first cut. Keep in mind, this cut is a trial. Um, it's not on a finished product. Anytime I have a, a, a brand new tool that I'm using or a brand new cut that I'm trying, I always try it on a piece of scrap wood. And that way when I'm done, I haven't wasted a, a good board. And that worked fine. So what I'm going to do now is move it over. And if you notice, it starts basically at that position where I have set it. So I'm going to raise it up a little bit. Now it's in the start mode and it's running. It's going to go in, go all the way across, and cut. And keep in mind this is a fresh new cut. So I'm going to speed this up for us. Here it goes, fast speed, which is makes it a little, I wish it would cut that fast in the shop, but it doesn't. So I'm going to mount another piece, and you'll see that it cuts. I'm going to speed this up as well. This is cypress, and as you can see, it's a little bit wet and sticky. It has more gum in it, so the wood chips don't fly out like they did on the last piece. This one's cedar, and you see the same thing. It sucks it out pretty good. Now it's going to go into back pass, and that helps clean it out if you have uh, suction on there. And you'll see when it gets to that hole, it's going to rise straight up. So we've made our, we've done what we wanted to. We've got a keyhole cut. 
and I just finished three examples for you. So have a good day, and thank you for watching. And if you have questions or you want me to demonstrate something, please let me know. Good day.